Hello, and welcome to a small portion of the world of Xerox research. Xerographic copiers have eliminated the drudgery of handling carbons, cutting stencils, and a number of other associated unpleasant tasks which were pervasive in the office only 15 years ago. Over the next 15 years, we believe much of the remaining drudgery of office work will be eliminated and will permit office workers to attend to higher level functions so necessary to a human's estimate of his own worth. It is not our intent to automate the office. Production lines and production pools do not necessarily result in productive and pleasant work environments. It is our intent to extend and enlarge the office worker's capability and span of control over a large variety of office tasks. Except for the copier and more recently some text processing capability, the office worker's tools have improved very little over the past half century. Meanwhile, the number of office workers has increased dramatically, now outnumbering all others and reflecting the increased value of knowledge to our civilization. The acquisition and communication of knowledge depends upon human information processing. In Xerox research, we are creating digital and xerographic information processing techniques which become closely coupled extensions to human information processing. The digital aspects of this work are focused upon highly interactive and personalized computer systems which have little in common with computer systems of the past and present. Today's conventional computers are generally used only by specialists. You can often identify them by their white coats as they work behind the glass walls surrounding their large machines. They are the intermediaries or middlemen between the user and the machine. The user does not have direct interactive control over his own tools and resources. Xerox research is creating a different form of computer system intended for the direct control and use of all office workers with their clerk or manager. Let us show you a few examples taken from one of our research centers. First, let me say a bit about the environment here. We are in a research center. One of its objectives is to design, build, and experiment with research prototype systems. These are not products, but rather are one of the vehicles used to formulate and develop ideas and techniques which will facilitate the specification and development of products by other Xerox groups. Here is an example of part of a research prototype which we found to be quite effective in some of our office experiments. It contains a processor, a display, a typewriter keyboard, and a pointing device for locating items or pictures on the display. It also contains a filing and retrieval capability and is connected by a communications network to other similar facilities and to a xerographic printer located elsewhere in the research center. These facilities enable a wide range of experiments in the domain of office information and communication systems. These include text and picture composition, editing, formatting, filing, retrieving, sending and receiving of a wide variety of information. Now a few examples. Imagine that through an experimental message capability resident in our prototype, you have asked your secretary to prepare a brief letter. This research prototype system contains templates for forms, letters, and memoranda to aid in their preparation. Thus, retyping of frequently used information is unnecessary. The system keeps track of the time and date, and this may be inserted by command rather than typing it out by hand. The system also has an address file. The secretary retrieves the appropriate address, and it is inserted. When you see something underlined, you know the secretary has selected it for some editing or formatting operation.
the letter is satisfactory, the secretary types a command which sends the letter over an electronic digital network to a computer-driven xerographic printer. The secretary goes to the printer and obtains the hard copy. Here is an example. Of course, electronic copies may also be sent to other offices with display screens and read at the user's convenience on his display. He may also choose to comment upon or edit the letter and may do so in the same mode we have just seen and send it back to the originator in either paper or electronic display form. In our next example, we're dealing with a multi-page manuscript which may result in the same paper or display alternatives as we have just seen with our letter example. The typist will change appropriate text into boldface or italic form, inserting superscripts and subscripts, sometimes typical of longer documents. Specifications for margins, between line spacing, and font sizes are easily changed in the progression from draft to final form. Here, for example, is a larger font appropriate for use in oral presentation or in the preparation of transparencies. We have found that the power and effectiveness of these capabilities comes from the ability to use them in combination. A computer-assisted editing system, for example, while useful as a separate capability, is significantly more effective when joined with capabilities to file, retrieve, print, send, and receive information. Thus, we are in the process of increasing the systemic value of these capabilities, that is, their effectiveness taken as an integrated group of functions within a unified but physically distributed office information system. While increasing the effectiveness of these research prototypes, we in research are also working to decrease costs in order to maximize our effect upon new product decisions which are made elsewhere in Xerox. We are genuinely excited about the prospects, both for the millions of people who work in offices and for Xerox. Thank you.